Hi, my name is Roland Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with an amazing artist, creator, director, his name, Mark David Wright. For more on Mark, you can read more about him right below this video, but in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the incredible work of Mark David Wright. Well, hello, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great, Will. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Well, the audience just got a little sneak peek of Dark Play that played the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2019, a play that you directed and also was acclaimed and was said to be one of the 10 must-see LGBT shows of the Fringe. Well, hello, Mr. Already World-Renowned Director. <laughs> Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Yes, that was, that, that honor was particularly special. Um, Dark Play um, was a beautiful, beautiful production, beautiful experience and a beautiful play. Um, it's all about sexual discovery in the internet age. And it's about a 14 year old boy who's kind of working through his de inner demons. And unfortunately, they come out in some really disastrous ways. It is a very exciting play, but the production was really special to me. And the fact that me and the entire team were honored in that way in such an incredible festival in Edinburgh that like celebrates so many different kinds of artists from all around the world to be honored in that way there just made the experience so magical and beautiful. Well, Mark, that is so exciting. And not only because of, you know, the acclaim that you got overseas, but also the fact that you, you just graduated Fordham University, correct? Yes, sir. I graduated in uh, the, the spring of 2019, and we went up at the Fringe in August of 2019. Um, it was actually a complete Fordham project. Um, it was my senior thesis, actually, and it, it was very well received at school. We applied and received a research grant from Ars Nova. They collaborate with Fordham to take it overseas, and we actually took the entire team um, all of our designers went, all of our actors who were in the original production, we all flew together to Scotland. Um, and, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. We wouldn't have went if not everyone could go because like we made it all together. It was such an intense and beautiful collaboration. And to have to go out with a bang like that and then to have it be received so wonderfully there was just miraculous. It felt, it felt like a dream. It was a beautiful experience. But yes, it was, it was quite the way to bust out of school. All of us were feeling, all of us were feeling pretty great about it. It was really wonderful. That's amazing, Mark. Is there any um, future for the play here in the States? We are, well, you know, since, since Edinburgh, a lot of things have happened in the world, including the, including, you know, a lot of shutdowns and a lot of people like rethinking things. And um, recently during the coronavirus pandemic, um, I've had to, theater, you know, wasn't going on. So I've had to kind of gear more towards film work and cinematography and directing for film, which has been really a really fulfilling way to keep, you know, the work going over coronavirus because I, we were about one month in and I was bored of binge watching all my Netflix shows. <laughs> all the, I kind of rushed through it. I got it all done. I did about nine months of quarantine in like one month in that first month. I watched so many shows I, <laughs> and, I was like, I am so bored. And so I really got into film work, investing in equipment, so cinematography, started writing a lot. And I've um, been lucky enough to work on a few projects during quarantine with some amazing artists um, film-wise, which has been really great, a really wonderful learning process and something that I've been learning a lot about outside of school because school was all theater centered. And so it's been really great to work on my feet and work with such great people and learn so much about film and working behind the camera. That's amazing, Mark. I mean, look at, I love that you've been able to do that, that you didn't take, you know, that you didn't take this time and just do nothing, that you kept your creative juices flowing and that as a director and a creator, which you are, 
you parlayed it into a different medium that again, like you said, you didn't study, but you just did the thing. And, you know, I'm so excited that you're actually already collaborating on a Phoenix project, a project that we'll be releasing sooner rather than later that you are working with me, a project that um, is a little brainchild of mine that I'll be directing, but you as, you know, the cinematographer, director of photography, um, I've had a blast working with you, you know, not only with actors here in the States, but, you know, you're going to be helping kind of put all of these videos together from all different parts of the country and the world. So I'm already excited to be working with you on that. And on top of all of that, Mark, I want to talk a little bit about your vision and process as a director and the types of projects and pieces of art that have inspired your art. You know, whether that be certain shows growing up that you loved or certain movies or television shows, you know, kind of go through maybe just a little bit of each of those mediums and maybe certain pieces that have affected you in some way. I would say the earliest piece of art that I would say really excited me was probably High School Musical. Um, I was obsessed. I was a child. I was I was learning the dances. I was doing all that, and that kind of like kind of got me into theater in a way, um, because it was such a beautiful, fun story, and I thought it was told so well. And then, of course, like looking up Kenny Ortega, the director's career. He's had like such a long career in pop culture, like choreographing Dirty Dancing and like Madonna music videos. And just to like see, and that was, he was kind of the first director who I saw like work, like a body of work. And um, going, growing up and going to college, um, going to school in New York City just offers up a wealth of resources um, to see work and to see shows. Fordham University, where I studied, we have a lot of people working on and off Broadway in New York City. And so we have a lot of opportunities to see shows that alumni are working on. And it's such a wonderful network. Um, but also New York itself is just such an inspiring place. Um, one of the most inspiring things I've seen in New York is the camp exhibit that the Metropolitan Museum of Art did, um, mainly because it was the first time I had seen um, mainly just a, an exhibit dedicated to queerness and to celebrating um, like different pieces of history that might have been told and might have been documented, but never like put on the same shelf, like put on the same wall and identified for like their commonalities, which for the most part was queerness and queer people through history. Um, and that was a big inspiration behind, that's been a big inspiration behind a lot of my work, kind of, you know, telling stories that don't always get told. And I think that's what the impossible task that directors have is to, you know, put reality either on screen or on, on stage. And of course, you're never gonna truly get it because there's, not, there's nothing like life. You, you can't capture it, which is why it's so miraculous when you're seeing a play or you're watching a film and, it, and you feel it and you're moved by it because that team, that director, that whatever you're watching, they, they might have just scraped the surface of that and they captured mm -hmm. that. And so I love striving towards that impossible task of like recreating reality, even if you're doing High School Musical, you know, even if you're doing a, the silliest um, non-realistic thing, if there's dragons or there's magic, but you're still looking for reality in that. Mm. Um, and I guess I and I guess I'm really drawn to pieces that no matter how ridiculous or campy or silly or theatrical they are, that they that they're still grounded in reality and you still find truth in there. Um, and that's what I strive to do as a director. No matter how outlandish the story or the set or anything where it is, what it is may be, still like trying to find that reality is something that I strive for. And um, something that, and those are the things that I'm drawn to the most. I love that. And that well, I, mean. I love that. And I think you picked a perfect North Star on Kenny Ortega. I mean, you look at everything that he's done, you know, that he's either done as a choreographer, a director, a director choreographer, whether it be like you said, his concert work or his movies, you know, you know, whether it's the romance and dirty dancing, the absurd comedy, of Hocus Pocus to building a world of kids who can realistically jump on cafeteria tables and sing and dance their feelings. And, and you buy it. Exactly. And I think you're absolutely right. I think that it's, you know, up to us as creators and directors 
to kind of continue in those footsteps of people that unapologetically went after stories that they were enthusiastically not only believed in, but believed in it so much to make it work that mm -hmm. they land in a place that's digestible. And although as, you know, absurd and as unrealistic as on paper it may seem, but like, again, it's kind of like what we do and what I know already working with you, Mark, you know, you're a best idea wins collaborator and I already get that with you. And the fact of the matter is that's gonna obviously not only take you a long way, but it's gonna also inspire others to dream about the impossible actually being possible. Well, Will, I, working with you, I, I love that phrase you used, was the best idea wins collaboration because whoever whoever's going to make this on our team the best that it's going to be that's the that you have to go towards the right thing and i love collaborating i love getting people in a room who just really care and are really just the best at what they do and um working with you has been a great exemplar of that um and i'm very privileged to work on this phoenix video with you and it's been such a privilege to do that together. Uh -huh. Well, Mark, it'll just be the first of many, my friend. But, you know, speaking of Phoenix, you know, this being this new social media platform, that, you know, whose goal is to really connect people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all creeds, all languages, and using the power of not only the transcendent universal language of music, but, you know, the transcendent language of creativity. And I think about Mark, you know, what you've already done in, you know, your short time since graduating Fordham, but just the way that you think about, and you mention it a lot, and I love it, and I'm going to steal it, about, you know, finding um, the, um, I'm going to steal the idea that you often have said already, is that whole notion of the possibility and finding the impossible and grounding it in truth. And I, I look at you as an artist whose work is going to and has already transcended so many um, things that might hold other artists back from creating things. And um, I'm curious to know, with all of that said, Will, what's your question? Um, what, what are you throwing at me? Is this I, the curveball? Yeah, is this the Barbara Walters tearjerker moment? <laughs> I want to know what you're most excited about in terms of, you know, joining a social media platform like this. Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, after the after the over a year, over a year we've had of just being, you know, isolated and not being able to connect with the people we have to be a part of this community that of artists to to connect. That's the, the whole point of it is just so, so um, refreshing. And so I'm so grateful for it because we need it now more than ever because we've just been we've it's not good to be alone it's it's not it's good to reflect and it's good to you know find out more about yourself but also we i i personally i'm not speaking for the world but i felt like really detached from others and really detached from artists and really detached from you know the city that i love and the people that i love and that i love to work with and collaborate with and learn from and I feel like I'm, I have a lot of catching up to do, you know, in a lot of ways, even though I've been, I've been, I've been working and I've been trying to keep the juices flowing. I mean, I'm like, we're ready. We're ready to go back. Like it's time. And so like have this beautiful network of people to connect with um, is just going to be so, is just so wonderful. Um, especially now, especially after the year that we've had, I think it is, it's going to be so awesome to experience and to be a part of. Absolutely. Well, Mark, I'm so grateful for your time today. And I, uh, I can't wait to speak with you soon. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Will. Artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artist once and for all. Join Phoenix 
join the change.